Okay, so welcome back. I actually have written a blog post on this topic, so if you wanted to check that out, I will put it in the description. Uh, really, it'll just be helpful for maybe going into more detail on what I talk about in the video, but also copying and pasting the commands you're going to see me run. So feel free to check that out if you'd like to. Um, I'd also recommend checking out secure.com. They have a blog about this topic, and this is actually where uh, I pulled the exploit code we're going to use. So definitely check out their blog. It goes into much more depth than what I'm going to cover. They also have an awesome white paper that's multiple pages long. Um, I'd highly recommend maybe just kind of reading through this so that way you get a real good like in-depth understanding of, of what's happening. Um, but the vulnerability that we're talking about today is not actually anything that's brand new. Um, in fact, it, it was something that there was a patch released for about a month ago. Um, but the reason it's it's getting a lot of press at the moment is because companies like Secure and, and there's been a few others as well um, have released some exploit code, some proof of concept exploit code that have really made it easy for anybody to get their hands on and, and play with this exploit, which is exactly what I'm doing here. <laughs> so the exploit can be found here. I'll put a link in the description. Of course, you can also grab it from that blog I mentioned earlier. Um, but this is the proof of concept code that, you, that you'd be able to go out and do a git clone on. So you can come in, copy this, and, and git clone that to your machine. Um, there is a prereq. So in order for that exploit code to work, you do need the mpacket suite. Um, and in fact, they've actually recently, I think just today, updated mpacket to include some new features that you'll want to use. So I would recommend updating mpacket if you aren't using the, the release from today, uh, September 15th. Um, and then once you have this updated and you have this ready to go, performing the exploit itself is actually pretty simple. So let me show you, let's hop on over to the domain controller and I'll, I'll show you what the target is that we're going to be attacking. So here we are in the domain controller and uh, I'm just going to show you guys a few things just so that way when we start running commands in a second, uh, we can just verify that, that I've got everything correct. So if I just do a quick IP config, we can see the IP address that this domain controller is running, 10.0.0.10. 10. Um, we're running Windows Server 2008. Sorry, <laughs> 2019. Um, we could see that somewhere in here. Yep, 2019 standard. And we've got a list of users here in Active Directory, and they all have their passwords configured. In fact, I even have some of them in clear text right there. Um, but the goal of the attack is for us to, well, I mean, the end goal is to pull out all of these password hashes, see if we can take them offline, try to crack them, or, you know, then that could open the door to performing some sort of pass the hash attack. But if we can extract the, the password hashes on a domain controller, you basically own the whole network. Um, because from there, I mean, you can basically be anybody. <laughs> so in order to take this to the next step, let's go look at our attack machine. And um, we can actually even go out to my blog post here and grab the command that we need to run. So before I actually perform the exploit, I just want to show what happens if we try to do like a, a secret dump before performing the exploit. So here's the command, and then we just need to update the placeholders here. So target IP is going to be of the domain controller. And then the host name of my domain controller is king. The domain is NBA. And all right. So what we're running is secret dumps.py. And that's actually a Python script that's part of that in packet suite. And usually secret dumps.py requires a um, like an authenticated administrator account. Like we have to have credentials typically in order to connect to this target that we're trying to connect to um, and, and dump out all of the secrets, which is just the NTLM hashes or all of the, the hashes for the user accounts on the domain. So um, when I run this, it'll prompt me here to enter a password, right? Because again, this is typically an authenticated tool. You have to already have administrator username and username password combination. So I'm just going to hit enter. It's a null password. I don't know what the password is. And we get a log on failure, right? So the attack doesn't work. So what we want uh, is, is we're going to actually abuse this CVE to first reset the password. We're going to make the password of the actual computer itself. So in Active Directory, you have user accounts, but then you also have computer accounts. So if we come in here, 
we've also got a list of computers. And these are all the computers that are joined to the domain. And each computer has its own credential as well. Now, it's not typically something that we set or something that we know. Uh, that's usually just handled by Active Directory on its own. And definitely read up on that topic to understand that better. But what we're going to, to do is we're going to abuse CVE 2020-1472 to reset the credential for this keying hostname or this keying domain controller. And by doing so, we would then be able to perform an attack like this, where we can authenticate with a password that we control, um, or maybe just no password at all if we make the password equal to null, which is actually what this, uh, this code here that we got from GitHub is going to do. So we've got our command copy, and I'm going to paste it in here. And then again, we'll need to modify it. So the target IP, again, is the domain controller we're hitting. And then the NetBIOS hostname, I believe, is just king. I'll do lowercase just in case that causes an issue. And I'm going to hit enter. And it's going to go out and it's going to try to perform an authentication attempt to that server. And bam, check it out. So we see target was vulnerable and it changed the account password to an empty string. And exploit was complete. Awesome. Well, what if we then try to come back and we'll rerun the same secret dump command we tried earlier? We'll get hit with that password prompt, but this time when I hit enter, check it out. We were able to actually dump out all of the different password hashes for the domain. And that's because, right here I just kind of paged up a bit, but I can scroll back down. That is because the exploit was able to successfully reset the password to that domain controller computer account. So then when we go to use something like secret dump, we can authenticate without a password. And now we've got all the different hashes for the user accounts on the domain. We even have some Kerberos keys, so we could do something like Kerberosing or take this even further if we needed to, but we've got domain admin right there. If any of these user accounts have domain admin privileges, then we've got the account pass password hash, and again, we could take this offline, try to crack it, get the clear text password, or even just perform like a pass the hash attack and, and get real nasty with this. So that's it. That's that's the whole attack, guys. And uh, yeah, hopefully, um, hopefully you learned something and, and found, well, man, patching is really, really important. So I'll uh, I'll show you next how to actually patch this so that way you won't be victim to it. So I'm running in my demo environment. I'm running Windows Server 2019. Um, so I knew from the article I talked about earlier what KB uh, what KB, the update that I need, the patch that I need is, is within. So I was able to go to the Microsoft Update Catalog, throw that KB in, and then download the actual patch that I needed. So you could do that. You could also just run Windows updates on your machine. Hopefully you've already got some sort of patch management policy in place to where that's already happening for you. Um, but once the patch is installed, it'll show up here in a list of installed updates. And then when the exploit that I showed you earlier, when that same exploit's actually attempted, um, we'll get a new message. So I'm going to run that exploit against the machine. And it's going to go through and, and perform 2,000 different attempts. And that number can be modified if you modify the exploit code. But after those 2,000 attempts occur, it'll error out. And it will tell us, hey, this machine is likely patched. Whereas last time we ran this, obviously, we were able to get very different results. And there we go. We can see the attack failed. So Obviously, applying that patch is going to be super helpful. Um, I would read up on that same article, that CVE article, um, because it, it talks about how Microsoft's actual official plan to get this uh, vulnerability patch is going to be two phases. So phase one is performing this, this patch that we've done, um, but then there's actually a second phase that you'll probably want to read up on. So I'd highly recommend reading that article just so you're kind of fully aware of, of how to protect yourself from this. Um, but obviously, just running the patch will prevent at least this particular exploit code. So that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed. And uh, as always, please do consider telling someone about the channel or hitting the subscribe button. And until next time, we'll see you then. Thank you.